Hello. My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 170, the very last lesson in the series. It's been a long journey. There are 170 videos now. Well, after after we finish today's video, there are 170 videos you will find on my channel, starting from day number 3001 through 3170. As you can see, today is our day 3173. It's to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition day 170. And today we'll do the very last problem that you will see there that appears in the second practice exam on page number 496. Let's take a look at it. There's a lot of writing involved, so I wrote uh, as much as I could ahead of time to save, us, to save us some time in the video. Here's what it says. It says, it says, eight points. It's important that you have the book in front of you so that you can read the problem yourself as it actually appears in the book. Do you understand? Because I do not put it verbatim on the blackboard. Eight points are equally spaced on a circle. So we have a circle and we have eight points on it. They are equally spaced. They go on to say, if four of these eight points are to be chosen at random, if, if four of these eight points are to be randomly chosen, are to be chosen at random, what is the probability, what are the odds, that a quadrilateral, that a quadrilateral having the four points as vertices will be a square? One more time, we have eight points on a circle, that are equally spaced, we are to choose four of those eight points at random. After having chosen four of those eight points at random, the question is, if we were to join those four points, and if we were to form a quadrilateral, what are the chance that the four points that we use as vertices actually turns out to be a square? Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at it, shall we? It's a probability problem, obviously, but it's not just a probability problem. You will see in a second, there is a lot more involved in it than a simple probability problem. The way we're going to figure out, which is the way we always do, which is the number of favorable outcomes. On the top, we have number of favorable, favorable outcomes, and on the bottom, we have the total number of outcomes. The favorable outcome would be the number of ways a square can be formed using four of the eight points at the vertices. A square can be formed using four of the eight points. Number of ways squares can be formed using four of the eight points at the, as, as the vertices. And on the bottom, we have the total number of outcomes, which is the number of number of possible quadrilateral, number of all the possible quadrilateral can, that can be formed using any four of these eight points on the vertices. So let's take a look at these eight points that, that, we, that we've been talking about. They have to be equally spaced. They have to be equal. That's the key part here. If they're not equally spaced, it's very difficult to form a square. You understand? It's not a problem to form a quadrilateral, but you will not get a square out of it necessarily if they're not equally spaced. So let's take a look at it. So. Since there, are, since, there are, since there are eight of them, that makes our life actually easy in terms of locating them. So let's just draw. So that's, that's, how we, that's how we have it, 90 degrees. And since there are eight of them, and since there, is, there are 360 degrees in a circle, and we want to divide into eight equal parts, eight equal parts, let's divide top and bottom by four. Eight, eight goes into four two times, 36 goes into nine times. Of course, when we divide by by 4, obviously we're going to get 90 because 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. If you divide a circle in 4 parts, you're going to get 90 degrees if you divide top and bottom by 4. If you cut in half again, if I divide top and bottom by 2 again, we get 45 degrees. In other words, if you want 8 equally spaced points, they have to be at 45 degree angle. Follow. This is a 45 degree angle and they are all 45 degree angles, you understand? The way I draw it, it's not going to come out perfect, but it will do the job as best as we can. So now we draw a circle around it. Now we draw a circle around it. I'm going to do my very best to see what we get. There we go. There is your circle. And these eight points that we see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, they are all equally spaced because every single angle here is a 45 degree angle. Do you understand? Even though I don't label it, but they are all 45 degree angle. So we have our eight points. Let's find out the number of possible quadrilateral that can be formed 
number of possible coordinates that we can form using any four of these eight points as vertices. Let's take care of, let's take care of the denominator first and then we'll worry about numerator. Let's do it in the top. We look at the new denominator first as to how many as to how many possible quadrilaterals can be formed using four, any four of these eight points. You understand? Well, yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's look at let's look at the denominator. First, as I said, we'll worry about the denominator in a second. The question here, if you're looking at the denominator, the question boils down to this. The question here is, how many, how many different, how many different ways, how many different ways can, can we choose, can we choose four objects? out of 8 when and this is the most important part when order when order does not matter when the order does not matter if that's the question if, if somebody were to pose the question in that way how many different ways can we choose four objects out of eight when the order does not matter? Of course, the order does not matter. We just want to pick four points. It doesn't matter which order we pick this order, uh, these points, because that that has no significance. So, how many different ways can we choose four objects out of eight when the order does not matter? Well, if the order does not matter, what are we dealing with? Permutation or combination? Of course, this is combination. This is combination. Do you understand? This is a combination problem. We have eight objects. We have to, we have to choose four out of eight. What we're going to do next, listen carefully, what we're going to do next, if you still have trouble following me as to what I'm about to do in the next one minute, then it's important that you master this concept of permutation and combination. It's about time. Today is our last day last tutorial. I will tell you which video to go back and watch in case you have, you have not done so or perhaps you did it and you still haven't mastered them. I'll tell you in a second. So we need the room so we can erase this thing. We'll come back and figure out the numerator in a second as to how many squares can be formed using four of these eight, eight points as, as vertices. How many squares can be formed using four of these eight points as vertices. But let's take care of the bottom part that we're working on right now. So that's the, this is the bottom. Right here the number of possible quadrilaterals that can be formed using any one of four of these eight points as vertices is the same as this. Because when we're forming quadrilateral, it doesn't matter which four we pick. We just have to pick any four. Any four points we pick, we're going to get a quadrilateral. So it's best essentially four objects to be chosen out of eight, and the order does not matter. This is a combination problem. So let's begin, shall we? How many different ways can we choose the first point? Well, there are eight possibilities. There are eight possibilities, so we have eight different choices of picking the first point. Having chosen the first point, how many different ways can we choose the second point? Well, there are only seven left over, so there are seven possibilities of choosing the second point. As soon as we take, a, as soon as we pick a second point, as soon as we pick a, pick a second point, we will under we will, we will realize we will realize that we will double we will start double counting. We will start double counting. We cannot count A B as one possibility and B A as another possibility. But that's what will happen. As soon as we start picking the second point, we'll start double counting. How do we undo the double counting? Well, simply take half as many. Simply take half as many. So now we have already chosen the two points. Let's pick a third point. How many different ways can we choose third point? Well, there are only six left. If you, if you, chose, if you chose this one as the first point, and that one as the second point, there are six left. So there are six different ways we can choose a third point. As soon as we pick a third point, we'll start triple counting. We'll start triple counting, and therefore we must compensate for it by taking third as many. And if I just lost you here, or if I lost you here, this is what I would like you to watch. Where can I put it? Let's put it here. We do not need any of this thing now. We already have it. Let's put it here. Permutation, permutation, and combination. And Thank you. 
day 3096 through 3100. In other words, from day 96 to 100, there are five videos there where we talked about permutation and combination, and then there are five more, day 3116 through 3120. If you have not watched these videos already, watch them, do the problems with me as, as, as we go through them. Master this concept is very important. Permutation and combination problems appear on the GRE with regularity. And when I say with regularity, I mean all the time, every single exam. You will find few questions dealing with permutation and combinations. Same thing applies with probability. If you are weak on probability, you will also find videos labeled probability and there are 15 of those. Look for them. So, as soon as we pick the third one, we'll begin to triple count, to, to undo the triple counting, to counteract it, we divide the number of possibility by 3. We have chosen 3 points already. Let's pick a fourth point. We have chosen 3 points already. How many different ways can we choose a fourth point? Well, there, how many there are left? There is 1 left, 2, 3, 4, and 5 points left. Of course there are 5 left because there were 8 to begin with. So there are 5 ways we can choose a fourth point. As soon as we cho choose the fourth point, we will begin to quadruple counting. We will count, start counting each one four different times. We can't have that. To undo it, we have to take a fourth as many. Watch this video and you will understand what I am talking about. Do you understand? That's it. We are done. This, this is how many quadrilaterals we will have. This is how many ways we can choose four objects out of eight when order is of no importance. Let's simplify, shall we? I see two times four which is eight. Two times four is eight. So eight goes away. And I see a 3 and a 6 that goes away, so it's 2. There we go. 7 times seven times 5 is 35. 35 times 2. This is essentially 35 times 2. There are 70 different, there are 70 different quadrilateral that are possible. There are all together a total of a total of a total of 70 quadrilateral can be formed using four out of these eight points on the circle. On the circle there are eight possible points. Out of those eight points, if you were to choose any four and ask ourselves how many quadrilateral can be formed, now we know the answer. The answer is 70 of them. Using any of these eight points here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. You pick any four points and you form a quadrilateral. Here is one I'm going to make here. Uh, we can go say for example 1 to 3 to 7. Two back to one. Oh, that's the triangle. That's not going to do the job. It's already have. I chose only three points in time. Let's choose one more. That wasn't very bright. How about one, three, seven, eight, and one? You see, that's a quadrilateral. So not, yeah, that's a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral simply means four-sided picture. That's a four-sided picture. It's not a square. It's a four-sided picture. And there are 70 possible four-sided pictures you can form in this circle by using any four of these eight points. We are done with the numerator, let's take, we are done with the denominator, let's look at how many squares can be formed. Okay? We are done with all of this thing, let's take a look at how many squares can be formed. We need, we need the room, so I am going to have to erase all of this thing. All of this is done, there are 70 of them possible. Now, let's look at the numerator. How many, how many squares, how many squares can be formed? Is that the question? How many squares can we form out of these eight points? So let's start the process. Let's start the process. 
choose choose a point choose a point a point any point choose a point any point any points out of this eight having chosen one point to form a square let's see what happens let's erase this thing we no longer need it we already have it there are 70 of them let's erase it out of the way so here's our here's our circle one more time here's our circle one more time remember they are they are equally spaced, so it's 45 degrees. Here is our circle. Pick a point. It, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference at all which, which point you pick. I'm going to pick this one. Having chosen this point, having chosen this point, let's give this point's name so we can actually easily see what's going on here. Otherwise, it will be difficult to talk about them. I'm just going to name them A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H going clockwise. So we're going to choose point A. Having chosen one point, it says choose a point, any point. We have chosen a point. So having chosen Having chosen one point, any point, let's form a let's form a square. Let's form a square. What's what happens? We're going to form a square. How do we choose this point? The answer is at random. We just pick one point out of eight. It has no significance. It could have been any one of these eight points. Having chosen that, having chosen one point. Having chosen that one point, let's form a square. There we go. But since we want a square, it will have to be from A to G. Let me choose a different color here. A to G, A to C, C to E, and E to F. You see the square? Very good job. Let's keep on going. I'm taking my time because why not? Let's just understand it properly. Once we form, once we form one square, this is where the this is where the punch punchline is. This is where the payoff is. Once, once we form one square, there is only there is only one more that can be formed that's it that's what we need to understand once we have formed one square there's only one more square once once we form one square there's only one more square that can be formed with the remaining four points once once we form one square there's only one more one more one more square one more, one more square that can be formed using using the remaining four points. That's it. There are no other possibilities. That's the key here. That's what we need to understand. I'm going to show you now the second point. Second one with the green marker. Hopefully you can see the difference. So we're going to make one more. You see, that's one one square. You can see here. Let's do the other one here. And to emphasize it, I'm going to I'm going to so that it's easier to see. That's it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which point you start out with to, from the, in the beginning out of, out of the eight points, out of these eight points, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, out of these eight points, you, you can pick any point at all, form a square. Once you have formed a square, you will realize soon that there is only one other square that can be formed. That's it. There are no other possibilities. There are only two possible squares. There are only two possible squares to form.
there are only two possible squares that can be formed using these eight points. So I'm not going to write everything. That's it. We're done. So let's look at the answers. We're done. So how many favorable outcomes are there? Favorable, favorable outcome in the sense of, is in the sense that we get what we want. What we want is a square. But there's only two possible ways. There are only two favorable outcomes. As you can see there, one in blue and one in green. Out of how many possible quadrilateral? Out of how many total possible quadrilateral? Well, I just erased it. Out of 70 possible quadrilateral. That's it. That's our answer. One out of 35. The odds that if you were to pick four points at random among these eight points on the circle, which I've carefully put there, equally spaced that is, and if you were to pick four of these eight points at random, there's one out of 35 chance that the four points that you picked will allow you to form a square. That's all. Because there are 70 quadrilateral that can be formed, and out of those 70, only two of them will be squares. Do you understand? We are done. I was going to say I'll see you tomorrow. Out of habit, I almost said it, but then I stopped myself. We are done. Today was our last day. It's been a nice journey. I wish you best of luck on the exam, on the test, in your career, in your life. And if you decide, if you decide that working with me one-to-one -one would be beneficial to you, if you decide to hire me as your tutor, I'm always there. You can reach me at my phone number, 1-800-808-PREP. Or if you're, if, you're, if you're calling me, if you're from outside the U.S., you will not be able to call the toll-free number. You can always send me an email, prepstat at aol.com. Or you can also Skype me. You can also reach me on Skype. My Skype ID is exactly what you see here, Keshwani Prep. Keshwani Prep is my Skype ID. Where can we put it? My Skype ID is Keshwani Prep. That's all. Send me a message on Skype, send me an email, make a telephone call, whatever you like. Get hold of me if you want to work with me one-to-one. -one. I provide private tutoring online over on the, on the Skype, one-to-one. -one. Uh, and uh, you might find it useful, you might find it beneficial. All right? Best of luck. It was a pleasure and an honor. Bye now.